Soda down and sit down. You're, you're, it's a paparazzi. You're here. <laughs> right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Do I say what do I say? No, I'll let I'll go like this one. It's your turn. All right. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, hi, my name is Brady or something? Sure. Hold on. Let me get us started here. Getting all out of order here. Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting as we're sitting in the chambers. Today is Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Ellen, would you please do the roll call? Yes, thank you, Mrs. Granato. Good, good evening, everyone. Ms. Callan Carson? Here. Mr. Riley, Mr. Carey, excuse me? Present. Mrs. De Roberts? Here. Ms. Hernandez Williams? Mr. Riley? Here. Ms. Walters? Present. Mr. Weiner? Here. Vice Chair, Mr. Lacavoli. Here. Chair, Mrs. Granato. Here. Weathersfield High School co-student representative, Noah Torrance. Here. And our Weathersfield kid chair from Emerson Williams School, Mr. Brady Schaff. Here. <laughs> All present. Okay, thank you. Um, and right now, I'd like our kid chair, Brady Schaff, to stand, and I'll stand with him, and he'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Emmett, tonight we do have student and staff recognition and he's sitting right next to me. Absolutely. <laughs> so we have our first um, kid chair. It's Brady Schaff from Emerson Williams School. He wrote a delightful essay that he'll be reading to us tonight. So I introduce all of you to Brady Schaff from Emerson Williams School. Hi, my name is Brady. I'm from Emerson Williams. And um, is that your teacher's name? Oh, my teacher's name is Miss Curtis. And um, I like to play um, baseball, basketball, and football. Great, and you have some wonderful ideas. You want to read your essay? Sure. Go ahead. My name is Brady Schaff, and I would like to run for the Board of Education Chair. I live with my mom, dad, brother, and two dogs named Millie and Abby. I have friends who I hang out with at school and out of school. In school, I play sports with my friends at recess, and I play the drums and band. At home, I play baseball, basketball, and I'm going to play tackle football next season. I enjoy helping my community by doing Cub Scout projects and helping coach my brother's baseball team. Some character traits that I have is I am calm, humble, and very loyal. I am also adaptable, patient, flexible, and funny. I am running for the Board of Education Chair because I would like to do anything I can do to make the school a better place for the teachers, kids, and the wonderful parents and guests who volunteer to help the school and everybody in it. As the Board of Education Chair, there are three things that I would make different. The main change I would make is that I would let kids sit with different classes or homerooms during lunch. I would do that because the only time a day that people in different classes can talk to each other is lunch and recess. Mm -hmm. And if you want to sit with other classes, then you will make more friends. The second thing that I would like, that I would make is more food for lunch, especially for fifth 
fourth, fifth, and sixth graders because there is not enough food for the older kids who need more food. The final reason is that there should be more healthy choices at lunch because almost all the food choices have a lot of sugar. That is very unhealthy, so I think that we should have a salad option every day. Thank you for considering my application to be the kid chair. I would love to help the school systems in my community. Okay, thank you. You did a great job. So you stay right there. I'm making them stay. Um, So thanks, Brady. He, he was, he's very composed up here. He's doing an excellent job. And we, I've already told him he can stay as long as he can. Um, next on our agenda is the approval of the minutes of the previous meetings. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? No, seeing none. OK. Those who approve the minutes of the last meeting? Aye. 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 Um, uh, nays. And any abstaining? Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone wishing to come up and make a public comment? Please come to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. And another reminder, the board members will not make comments immediately after people come up to speak. So thank you. No problem. <clears throat> Good evening, I'm Jennifer Curry, 162 Straddle Hill. My comment tonight is about the change in the kindergarten start age and Weathersfield's process. To start, I fully support the change to September 1 to align with most other states. And the majority of my frustration lies with the state for making the change on June 29, 2023 with implementation for the 24-25 school year. I commend Kim, Liz, and Dawn for their presentation two weeks ago. They did a wonderful job. This is both a personal and professional issue for me. I am a certified K-12 school counselor who has worked at all three educational levels within my career. Personally, I have a November birthday and started kindergarten at age four. And my youngest child has a December 2020 birthday and is impacted by this change. I have been very interested in this and attended the last Board of Ed meeting, admittedly my first. And I was really hopeful to learn something new about Weathersfield's process. However, that was not the case. As I previously stated, Kim, Liz, and Dawn gave a wonderful presentation, but the reality is that same general presentation was given at the WEC meeting back in November 13th, four months later, and not much new to report. When the state made a major change on June 29th, and it was, as far as I can tell, not on a Board of Ed agenda until March 12th, I'm disappointed, and that's my overall sentiment. It's understandable that each town can approach the process differently for comparison, Glastonbury's Board of Ed meeting on November 13th addressed their approach to the change, a phase in, and the vote took place on November 27th. Middletown, February 15th, the Board of Ed approved a kindergarten readiness bridge program for approximately 97 students affected by the age change, which I did share with the Board of Ed members and the WPS administration. Monroe, December 7th, 2023, the superintendent's community letter addressed the change in the process for the waiver, and Cromwell, an alert pops up on the Cromwell Public Schools homepage with the change in kindergarten age, as well as three specific links addressing the issue. I could go on. My frustration is twofold. WPS not being forthcoming about the waiver process and the waiver process itself. Every single time Weathersfield puts out information regarding the change, they do not mention the waiver process, including the very recent publication in the summer 2024 Parks and Rec booklet on page nine. If you visit the Weathersfield Public Schools registration page, it does take multiple clicks to get the information. And thank you, Marjorie, for echoing this last meeting. I hope many of you went home that night and tried to find it. When WPS puts this information out via Parent Square, which non-public school families don't have access to, or Facebook, I'm often the one adding a comment with the details about the waiver process. I openly spoke about this at the March 7th WSPC meeting, we learned from Mr. Emmett that the waiver requests were at 21, but split quite differently among the schools. Highcrest had 10, Webb had five, Hanmer three, Charles Wright one, and Emerson Williams two. This is 21 out of the 60 to 70 students that was estimated that this impact could change, the change could impact. At that time, not one child had yet been screened. 
for those parents impacted by the state's change in pursuing the waiver process, it's a stressful time to say the least. The financial impact of another school year of preschool, and the financial impact of another year of preschool is one thing, but not knowing your child's plans for the following school year is another. Weathersfield seemed to take the state's message literally and is conducting assessments at individual buildings. When resources are already strained, I'm confused as to why taking highly qualified educators, the reading and math specialists mentioned at the last meeting, out of their work with students is best practice. Most of the schools have not yet started their screeners wanting to have a cohort of students to evaluate on the personal social front, which is completely necessary. But when 21 families had reached out prior to March 7th, why couldn't there have been a centralized process? Those screenings could be completed already, and we would know if 21 students are joining next year's kindergarten. Our preschool educators conduct screenings of potential peer playmates in March every year. It was Friday, March 15th of this year. Weathersfield Public Schools already has a process where qualified staff evaluate students ages three to five. And these educators are not being pulled from direct service of students because the preschool does not meet with students on Fridays. This concept, preschool staff conducting assessments on a non-student day is not mine. Monroe's centralized plan is exactly this. And I shared that information with Sally Destoli in mid-January. Her email reply indicated that we start the registration process in February and we'll start to screen at that point. That clearly didn't happen. As examples, I've communicated with two different families, each applying to a different school. Family A, initial contact to school in late February, a reply the next day saying there will be an evaluation in the spring, a letter received in mid-March that the assessment will be the first week of May, given the information in terms of preschool and parent forms, and a letter indicating what the areas of assessment will be and a decision two weeks after the assessment date. That entire process will be within two months. Family B, initial contact in early February, replied that they'll be in touch to set it up. Heard in early March that the hearing from them in the coming months to set it up. Notification actually today at 2.40 with an assessment date in mid-April. Their can process I, can I take, have you wrap up, please? Yep, three okay. months. Thank you. This is the child's oldest family. Think about the message that sends. I understand that Weathersfield, as well as every other town, was challenged with this change and the very vague waiver process language. This Friday marks nine months since the state change. And in my opinion, Weathersfield has not met this challenge. Thank you. Is there anyone else for public comment? Okay, so we'll move on. Mr. Emmett, you have some communications to share. I do. Thank you, Mrs. Granato. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to first recognize our uh, Board of Education members. March is Board of Education Appreciation Month. So uh, on, on behalf of the district, uh, just want to say <laughs> thank you to all of our board members with a uh, special chocolate treat. Um, we appreciate the work that you do. This is a volunteer position, and it's often... Um, culminating by many, many uh, nights, lots and lots of meetings, and um, quite frankly, um, you don't get paid for it. But you're here for the kids every night, so we greatly appreciate the work that you do. And thank you on behalf of all the kids of Weathersfield. Um, tonight and tomorrow night, we are um, unfortunately missing out on the festival performance. Uh, tonight is band and orchestra. I could tell you I got over last week for rehearsal, and it is heartwarming to see students from grades four right up through grade 12 playing together as a full ensemble. It was heartwarming to see, a very, very great performance. Tomorrow night, um, hopefully our policy and planning committee meeting can wrap up quickly so we can get over to the high school again. Tomorrow night is chorus. So uh, if you have the opportunity to get out and see the performance, please do so. These um, kids are absolutely super talented. Uh, spring sports seasons kick off this week. I know that uh, there were a couple of scrimmages uh, this afternoon, so we had the baseball team out on the field. Mr. Barabalt and I were uh, checking the uh, scrimmage out. Also, we had lacrosse. Um, the season starts in earnest at the end of this week and into next week, so I'm looking forward to a very uh, productive spring sports schedule. Uh, I want to let everyone know we are preparing, although we started with early voting uh, here at Town Hall, the uh, presidential primary will be taking place on Tuesday, April 2nd. We have two uh, schools in the district that are polling locations. Uh, Mr. Barabal, our director of security, has a plan uh, for each school. So we have uh, additional security that will be on site for the entirety of the day at both of these schools. 
We have uh, gone through this before and managed it. Um, we do not anticipate any issues. We've coordinated with the Registrar of Voters here at Town Hall as well as the Weather, uh, Weathersfield Police Department to make sure that we have a process in place. So um, I'll certainly keep you posted if anything uh, crops up. Uh, today I had the opportunity along with uh, many of my colleagues to visit Silas Dean Elementary, or Middle School, excuse me, for instructional rounds. Um, we got into classrooms today, seventh grade classrooms, and I have to say the difference between December and today in terms of students working harder than teachers was palpable. It was great to see. A lot of student engagement, a lot of collaboration. Uh, Mr. Schaff, when you make the transition up to middle school, I think you'll be very impressed with what you see. So again, kudos to the um, teachers and the administration at Silas Dean for a job well done today. Uh, on the illness front, uh, the latest numbers from the CCHD show that the numbers continue to drop, which is great news. The district attendance numbers continue to outperform last few year's figures month over month. Uh, for the current month of March of 2024, the district as a whole stands at 96.5%, which is pretty good. I will say again, freshmen get to school every day. That continues to be our weakest grade in terms of attendance. And I do want to give a shout out. Sophomores, sophomores have the highest attendance rate across the entire district. So congratulations. And Noah, don't get senioritis. Stay with it. I see uh, 12th grade starting to drop a little bit. So we continue to monitor. Um, Attendance and uh, frankly, I also in the Friday update this Friday, you'll be seeing a uh, video clip that Highcrest did that actually garnered some uh, kudos from uh, the CREC Open Choice Office. It's a quick video clip of about two and a half minutes on the importance of attendance done by Christine Mori, Kristen Rodriguez, and Sarah Altman, staff at uh, Highcrest. So, got a nice shout out from CREC, and actually, I believe it's in the CREC newsletter for the upcoming month. So. And then I do want to make sure everybody is aware we do have vacation coming up the week of April 8th, but uh, you will be receiving a parent square uh, communication about the eclipse. So in spite of the fact that we are off that week, the eclipse will take place um, here on the 8th of April in the mid afternoon. It will not be a total eclipse. It'll be partial. Um, we did get some information from the state that I'll be sharing with parents in the community. So although it is over a vacation week, it actually does have an impact on our sports schedule. We have a baseball game scheduled for Monday the 8th at 2.15, which is right when the eclipse starts. So uh, Mr. Maltesi uh, has been provided the information, and I know they are working on changing that game until late morning so that they can get it in prior to the eclipse. So. Uh, there'll be information, there's some resources that come from the state about, you know, being safe. It's a phenomenon that is going to be, you know, Constant. once in a lifetime for many people. So uh, we want to make sure that our families and our students are safe uh, in spite of the fact it's vacation week. Um, and then last but not least, I do want to make sure that everybody is aware we do have a short week. Uh, this Friday is a day off. So um, again, to all of our students, let's finish the month of March strong with good, solid attendance. With that, it's communications. Thank you, Mrs. Grinnell. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so we're gonna go on to our motions tonight, which we have 10 of them. So we'll get through all of them. So tonight we have 10 <coughs> motions, nine are on curriculum changes. So Matt Lacavoe, will you please read motion 6A? Yes, 6A, unrelated to curriculum. I move that the Weathersfield Board of Board of Education pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 10215F certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2025. This certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including but not limited to school stores, vending machines, school cafeteria, culinary programs, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or non-school organizations and groups. And further moved, that the Weathersfield Board of Education will allow the sale to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut Nutrition Standards, provided that the following conditions are met. One, 
the sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. Two, the sale is at the location of the event. And three, the food and beverage items are not sold from a vending machine or school store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice, meeting, or extracurricular activity. For example, soccer games, school plays, and interscholastic debates are events, but soccer practices, play rehearsal, and debate team meetings are not. The regular school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. Location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the food and beverage sales. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion? Brady, you want to talk about a nice healthy lunch? <laughs> All right, um, so we'll, we'll vote. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6A passes. Okay, 6B. Chuck, would you please read that motion for yep. us? Move that the Wethersville Board of Education approve Wethersville High School curriculum public speaking. Okay, is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion 6B passes. 6C, can I have Jim please read the motion? Uh, move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve WHS curriculum, uh, robotics, engineering. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? 6C passes. And 6D, Marjorie, would you read the motion for us? Yeah. Move that the Wethersfield Board of Ed approve the, um, the, the curriculum for WHS nutrition and food technology class. Second. Technology two class, sorry. Still second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, is there any discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? 6D passes. 6E, Janice, would you read that motion for us? Um, I move that um, Wethersfield Board of Ed approve Nutrition and Food Technology 3. Second. Okay, um, any discussion? Um, I just want to mention that um, this course, um, besides uh, including baking um, elements and um, cooking, also exposes the students to um, what it's like to set up your own uh, bakery or restaurant. Okay, it's very yes. exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? 6E passes. 6F. John, would you read it for us? Yep, I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approves the WHS curriculum for marketing and entrepreneurship too. Second. Um, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> 6F passes. 6G, Christina? Yes. I move that the Wethersfield Board of Education approve the curriculum for introduction to business. Second. Okay. <laughs> um, any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? 6G passes. Still moving along, 6H. Liz? Yes, I, have, um, I move that the curriculum for the concert choir, the Board of Ed approved the curriculum for concert choir. Second. Okay, a any discussion? All right, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? 6H passes. 6I, Janice? I move that the Wethersfield Board of Ed approve the curriculum for Art B um, at Silas Dean. Second. Okay, uh, looking both ways for any discussion. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? And we've made it 6J. Marjorie? Uh, I move that the Wethersfield Board of Ed approve the adoption of the following textbooks for the uh, CCSU ECE uh, EDF 
215 education in a multicultural society which includes textbooks uh, titled culturally responsive teaching and the brain uh, between the world and me by Tanasi Coates and savage inequalities children in America's schools by Jonathan Kozel second second all right any discussion all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So 6J passes. And I just want to make uh, say a word here. I want to thank Student Program and Services Committee. It's chaired by Janice DeRoberts with Chuck Carey, Elizabeth Walters, Christina Hernandez-Williams, and Sally DeStoli as members. I want to thank you for all your work. And another thank you to all the teachers at the high school and the middle school who are rewriting curriculum so our students have a rigorous 21st century curriculum. So thank you again, everyone here and in the schools for all this work. Okay, so we'll move on. We do not have a presentation this evening. So we'll talk about our Board of Ed meetings held. And the first one is a special Board of Ed meeting on March 13th, 2024. And it was concerning a student matter. We'll move on to community and public relations on 313-24. Marjorie? Yes, um, we held the meeting on March 13th, and most of it basically boiled down to three topics. One is a community survey we're finalizing um, to send out to the community, the school, the school district and the community at large for, it's a smattering, less than 10 questions about um, uh, kind of gauging their thoughts on possible issues or options for a elementary school renovation in the future and plans to do that. So that's gonna go out um, very soon. And um, so we were fine tuning some of the questions there and collaborating on that. And the second two thing, or the last two things were trying to engage or give out, be a little more transparent and um, as far as our communications go. And two things that were, are not on the, on the web site or have not been on the website are the minutes to the committee meetings and we do a lot of work on our smaller committee meetings and there's a lot of discussion and we do do minutes and we do reports like I'm doing right now um, but they just hadn't been put on the website so from um, we're, we're pl our plan is to make sure that all the chairs of the committees um, forward the committee minutes to um, our IT person or our webmaster to then place on the website um, under a section they're going to create for committee minutes. And that's going to start the process. We're gonna start that process soon. I think we're gonna try to for work out a format for how the minutes would look for, so it's there consistently, you know, there's a consistent look to, to them. And then also um, talking about the idea of when we have a presentation by somebody, whether it's staff or the community, um, or PowerPoint presentation, we can actually put those up as well, put links to presentations up so that the, you know, people who look up on the website can see all the different presentations that people work very hard on. Um, and um, instead of having to look through a YouTube video where it's, you, know, you can see it on the video of the Board of Ed meeting, but you have to find it and it can take a while, especially if the meeting's very long, but it would be very easy just to throw up the presentations um, in a specific spot. So we're gonna work on that as well, at that process as well. So, and I think um, that's it for community relations. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, Marjorie, are you gonna be able to um, note who we send the minutes to? I think we have a change in that. Um, I think it's going to be to DO and to the webmaster. That's who changed, right, okay. Yeah. So we'll, ch we'll look into that, thank you. Okay, another meeting was community, oh, a human resources and personnel committee, Christina. So for staffing and hiring, there hasn't been much of an update because um, we're in pretty good shape, um, which is a good thing. Um, a couple things. Um, absences and leaves of absences um, are also um, are pretty good. And the survey that went out, um, I'm just encouraging families to fill out the survey because that is the time for you to have a, a voice in the decision making with the district. So. Uh, that survey went out to families, so please try to fill out those surveys because that's important information for, um, you know, our, our staff and, and the board as well to make good decisions. And we're also working on some positive, um, just positive cards or something to just um, promote some positivity for our staff and, and to say thank you to the teachers because we know you work hard. And I think that's it. For some of the focus. Thank you, thank you. Um, and we'll move on to student program and services, which we just passed right. all those motions on. Um, but I still have some things to say. 
Um, the courses we approved tonight represent the ongoing efforts to continuously update and improve our curricula, as well to make ad additions that are required and that enhance our students' experiences in Wethersfield schools. These courses provide students with a solid introduction into the educational, social, and work world that they will very soon be entering. In addition, we also heard uh, school improvement updates from Silas Dean and the high school. From Silas Dean, we heard how the math interventionalists have positively impacted um, student progress and heard about progress being made on all three system-wide goals, the goals of empathy, achievement, and equity. The high school is offering um, options and supports that provide uh, pathways to graduation for all students. Uh, the hard work these teams are doing is very appreciated and their enthusiasm is amazing. Um, we also heard um, an update on our EL program, but I'd like to save that for comment time. Okay, thank you. Our next meeting was a CREC Council that I attended on Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. The CREC Council is the Capital Region Education Council of which Wethersfield is a member, along with 35 other surrounding towns. The council is responsible for the regional magnet schools and project choice. They have also organized and are running the Harford Head Start program. The meeting started with Executive Director Greg Florio discussing CREC's budget through a presentation. There was also the explanation of the budget changes and the challenges for this budget cycle. All that is on their website. The council also heard from Executive Director Greg Florio about the continuing programs of CREC, and we continue the challenging discussions of the General Assembly and the Magnus School's tuition costs. Again, a member commented that this money places a burden on participating town school systems and continues to create a challenging relationship between CREC and those participating towns. All town board members and CREC council members are encouraged to write to, to your legislator and all information about CREC, its schools, their marketplace for supplies and info to write to our General Assembly concerning another difficult budget for magnet school tuition can be found on their website. Thank you. And I'm gonna continue because we had a board retreat and as I always say, we weren't in the Berkshires. It was March 21st, 2024, and the Board of Education met as a group on Thursday the 21st at the Stillman Building for a retreat. And um, CABE was our guest. CABE is the Connecticut Association of Boards of Ed, which provides services, programs, and other activities designed to help school boards and their individual members provide exemplary le leadership in their school districts. The board met with CABE Senior Staff Associate Nick Caruso for professional development on the roles and responsibility of today's Board of Eds. Nick spoke of his own experiences as a board member and also to the changes all Board of Eds face today. An interesting fact that Nick spoke of is that Boards of Ed are the oldest government group in our democracy and that there are more Board of Ed members in our country under this democracy than any other group in our government. So I thank all our board members for their attendance and their engagement during our retreat. And we have Finance and Operations Committee, Matthew. Thank you, Bobby. The Finance and Operations Committee of the Weathersfield Board, board of Education met before our meeting tonight. Um, we went over less than usual. We discussed the current budget, the current year's forecast, projected forecast, uh, which currently sits at $34,000 over budget, or 0.05%, so negligible, very close. Um, the topic that we spoke on the most were special education costs, which are the item in our budget with the most variance. Um, they're very hard to predict. The swings when dealing with outplacements are large. Um, either way, depending upon if a student is leaving, entering, or staying in the district, we always try our best to keep kids in district as much as possible, but sometimes we just have to outplace. Um, and I'd be remiss if I only stressed or spoke about special education costs. Um, these are incredible kids and students, and we want them all to succeed and thrive to the best of their ability. 
just like every single other student in this district. And the money comes second to that fact. So thank you, Bobby. Okay, thank you. Okay, Board of Ed meeting scheduled. We have a policy and planning committee on 327-24 at six o'clock. Weathershield's Early Childhood Collaborative, WEC, on April 15th, 2024 at 4.30. And we have Human Resources and Personnel Committee on April 15th, 2024 at 6 o'clock. Student Program and Services Committee, April 16th, 2024 at 6 o'clock. Another CREC Council on April 17th, 2024 at 11.30. And Finance and Operations Committee on April 23rd, 2024 at, after, before our board meeting. Now, is there anyone wishing to make public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that public comments are limited to five minutes. Okay, are there any board comments? Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, um, at our student programming um, and services committee meeting, uh, we had a presentation from the EL department, the English language learners, um, by Pat, uh, Andrew Long and Patty Burlow, who are the um, uh, coordinators. They reported that the multilingual lingual learner enrollment has continued to increase and that presently, a third of our student body has another language at home. Several of our schools are now bilingual schools, meaning that 20% of the students speak a common language other than English. A significant number of these students who are fortunate to know these other languages are also identified as needing special education services. We currently have a total of 10 EL teachers and two tutors throughout our service system, serving a total of 374 students. It is anticipated that our multi -learner, multilingual learner population will continue to grow, and we in Weathersfield are fortunate to be experiencing this growth of diversity in our community. However, within our schools, we may have passed the point of needing EL programming suitable for a small group of students. At the very least, multilingualism has become a characteristic of our school system. It might be time to think about EL more systemically, more broadly as a way that we do things rather than a completely separate program. I don't know what that should look like, but it seems like it might be time to think about making changes. We have talented curriculum and content area coordinators and specialists who may have ideas about approaching EL differently. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Okay, anyone else for board comments? Jim? Thank you. I attended the, um, the concert uh, this evening uh, at the, uh, at the, at the uh, high school, and it was the uh, elementary school, the middle school, and the high schoolers uh, band and orchestra that gave a performance, and it was, uh, it was nice to be there. It was a great show. Okay, thank you. John? Just a couple quick things. Um, I want to uh, take a couple points from Marjorie's update on the Community, Pub Community and Public Relations Committee um, and want to talk about first the survey that will be going out. I know we didn't give an exact date, but as a member of that committee, committee and the chair of the Facilities Committee, I implore the public to take this survey. It's going to provide a lot of great data for us as we start to talk about the future of our schools here in Wethersfield. So please do take that survey. And then the other piece I want to talk about is the committee minutes because I think this is part of what we all do up here that doesn't get noticed very much in the public, and I think it's important that the public reads those minutes once they are put out. It's really where all the work happens here on the board. Thank you. Okay, anyone else for comments? Okay. Yep. Well, sorry. Ahead, Just following up, this survey that's going out to the community, this is the first the board has heard of it. I'm not on either of those committees, so I would hope that it gets brought to the board as a presentation before we send it out so it can have the full board approval without without just subcommittee approval. That was it, thank you. Okay, anyone else? I'd like just, just to say I was, um, I really appreciate the student um, programs and services committee minutes and just realize how much work goes into the school system and the teachers and the guidance counselors and um, 
how they came all come together to to give more information to the committee and um, I appreciate the, the thorough minutes on the minutes and it was really really informative about kind of where we're going the improvements um, where they're seeing you know where the guidance counselors are seeing improvements where they're seeing improvements in math scores um, so it was just very informative and I want to thank them for that work okay thank you okay seeing none we're gonna ask Noah what's life like at the high school <laughs> uh, good evening um, not quite sure what to say right now but I will I would like to um, kind of reaffirm miss Roberts comment sorry that uh, you know multilingualism is sort of become you know uh, really an expectation and a characteristic of WHS uh, you know it's when we kind of think about, you know, um, the different languages that are spoken at WHS, we sort of see it as only numbers, right? But it's a lot more than numbers. It's, you know, it's the group of Spanish-speaking students at lunch and the table next to you. It's the group of uh, Ukrainian-speaking students in your gym class. You know, I, uh, I'm a peer tutor um, uh, during uh, academic study hall some days, and the language in those classrooms, it's not English, it's Spanish, right? And uh, so I just want to appreciate how, you know, that is recognized and increasingly more so. Um, I didn't prepare anything because this is kind of my last minute, but uh, that's all I have to say, I guess. Thank you. Well, I have a question. How's the college search going? <laughs> stressful, very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't think you need luck, but good luck. Okay, so we'll move on. Any other? Okay, so we have unfinished business. I, Chuck, would yep. you read the recommended motion? Move that the Weathersville Board of Education set the 2024 Weathersville High School graduation date for Wednesday, June 12, 2024. Can I second. have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? Well, I have some discussion, and just to um, have an understanding of what went on. At the March 12th Board of Ed meeting, this motion was prevented, pre presented for consideration and a vote. Previous to that meeting and the motion, many members of the board had received letters from parents of graduates looking for a different date and questioning not only the date, but the process for choosing the day. The motion at the March 12th meeting was tabled. This gave the board time to look into how our graduation date was decided and gave board members the time to investigate how other towns in our area chose their dates. As a group, we searched and discussed information that we gathered and we came to a few conclusions. The first and most important for tonight is that the Weathersville High School graduation date will be Wednesday, June 12th at six o'clock at Cove Park with a rain place of the Weathersville High School. We also concluded in going forward that first, we can and will pick and announce our graduation date before October 1. This will allow families and friends the time to organize their special celebrations. It will also provide our safe grad volunteers the time to raise funds and to organize their exceptional safe grad party for our senior students. The board, and the, the board and the administration will now allow the safe grad organizers to look to other venues to hold this event. Many towns have been working on off-site safe grad parties with much success, and now Weathersville High School has that choice too. I'm glad the board took the time to make this de decision on our graduation date. We know that some are not pleased with the answer, but we're all pleased that we can be announcing the graduation date in the fall and can give our safe grad event more options for their special night. We're pleased to have had parents communicate with us. We hope you know that you are heard and all of us on the board look forward to seeing all of you at Wethersfield High School's graduation. Is there any other discussion on this? Okay, seeing none, we'll vote. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I personally, I'm, I'm just so very sorry. happy um, to hear that the October 1st date will be the date going forward as to, so that we can set that date. I think that's a win for the schools. I think that the families, students, safe grad, everything, and I think it's great. So thank you. Thank you. I'll look yeah. slower. Anyone else? Chuck? 
Yeah, I think um, this is, I'm glad we took the time. I know it was frustrating for some people, but uh, there's a lot of questions we had as well, and we wanted to make sure they were answered before we made a final vote on this. Um, and also just understanding the process now, it's different pre-COVID versus post-COVID. Um, and, I, and I think people need to recognize that, like pre-COVID, there was just, there was always this tradition of having the graduation party at, at, at Pitkin, weeks in advance, there'd be a, a large group of volunteers, they would be like, you know, changing the entrance, they'd be, you know, redoing the entire uh, uh, entranceway and hallway of, of Pitkin, and there was just a lot of volunteers that helped that night, and it could be on a Tuesday night, it could be on a Monday night, and there would still be enough volunteers to help with that group till five in the morning. Um, and then just, you know, since COVID, it's just been different. There's just less volunteers, and it's not just Weathersfield, it's nationwide. Um, people are stretched for time or whatever, and so it's been moved to the high school, which is actually harder, I think, as, as, a, I, as a person who was on Safe Grad last year, I think it's almost harder to achieve with fewer volunteers, um, and it's, it's, uh, it's tight. So I think this will be good, even though we can never guarantee, you can't guarantee a Friday night, it'll be good to know in advance where, you know, what date, you know, go for many, many months in advance, what date the graduation day will be on, and then Safe Grad can plan on-site, off-site, or however they want to do it, um, but this will help them in the process. Thank you. And Chuck? Yeah, a couple of things. So I'm, unlike, I guess, others who spoke, I'm disappointed we tabled it two weeks ago. Mr. Emmett provided us with the legal update, the legal opinion that said we couldn't have it the Friday before. We knew school was out the Thursday, the 13th, so there was no possibility of doing it on Friday the 14th. So the board just moved it for two weeks for no apparent reason. So it's kind of disappointing that we all think it's a great idea that we made people wait an extra two weeks. And the we that Ms. Granado talks about had nothing to do with myself, Jim, or Liz. We, this is the first time we've heard of the October 1st decision. And the problem with the October 1st is it's great until we tell them it's a Tuesday. And then we have three snow days in February and they all realize we could have it on a Friday. So we have to remember that too as we set the date really early. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Bobby. Um, I really appreciate the fact that we were able to table this at the last meeting. Um, it at least gave us time to consider our options. I think acting in haste at the last meeting and ignoring all of the emails that we got from families and parents was the irresponsible thing to do. I think the responsible thing to do was what was done. Table it for future discussion. And regardless of the fact that the date this year stays the same, at least we explored other options and we have a better plan moving forward. Thank you. Liz? Um, you know, although I am glad to hear about the October date, I, I do echo Chuck's sentiments in that I think it was great that questions were asked and we explored further, but going forward, I would hope that we have learned a lesson to do that far before. Look at the school calendar, look at what possibilities there are. Um, I do not agree with, um, with the tabling of the motion for two weeks because we learned, you know, that the Board of Ed was able to learn more in those two weeks, but nothing that we that would have changed the ability to change the date. So I hope that we change the process to do this earlier on during the year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, we all set to vote then? All right, we'll put this to vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? The motion passes. Okay, and at this time, I make a motion to move to executive session for the purpose of discussing documents protected by the attorney-client relationship. Is there a second? Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Opposed. And any abstentions? Okay, that concludes the public part of our board meeting. I want to thank Grady Schaff for being our kid chair tonight. And I want to thank you all for coming and watching. The board wishes you good night.